about Jimmy Shulanke, the author, a musician, dramatist, and folklorist, turns 80 on July 4. And so I thought it was a good idea to go visit and have a chat with him, which is what we did on the morning of uh, Monday, May 16. I went with my camera person, Feikemi, and our driver, Ujuni Mess. We met Baba sitting outside, had a few words, and then we went inside, had a few words, and then we came back outside in the uh, warmth of the sun and had quite uh, a long, longer chat. It was beautiful. You know, any time with a storyteller, it's always a fun time. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. this folklorist, this uh, great dramatist, and of course, this great singer. Hey, but mm -hmm. the art, what I was showing, shocking a lot of people, is the art. Uh, you see, there are so many times that uh, I wouldn't have uh, time to sing or act or do any other performing art situation. Those times, I would not like to just sit and just stare. <clears throat> because I have uh, once in a while this to go back to, I mean, this uh, collage situation. And the collage, the, this particular style of uh, artwork was created by me. All these uh, colors you are seeing on these walls. They are not by paint and brush. They are made from uh, colors taken from the pages of newspapers as well. I initiated it to teach it to children on my television uh, okay. series. Something for children as hands okay. down, okay. get some glue, get some scissors, cut this, cut this, put it together. So don't, you, don't you see it's looking like a man? Mm -hmm. oh, see, um, look, um, that's how it was initiated. And so when I have nothing to do, I just go back to it and continue to do it to a point that I've done over thousands of them. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
And I was just dashing it away at some point. But these days, people are coming here to say, how much will this <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh. So, but these stories that are depicted, because there are stories here. Right? Yes, yes. And this coming from like your childhood or from where? Mm, from uh, regular daily experiences, from uh, 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 cultural notes. Uh, because even in, in uh, um, some titles that were from within me, Ologum Gum, when I was much, much smaller, a, a boy, uh, when they say Ologum Gum is outside, in this my town, all the children will go and hide under their mommy's bed. <laughs> because nobody knew what Ologum Gum was. Nobody has ever seen a logo on Goom. But the mention of it to scare you will make you running to hide. So logo on Goom, Kure Kure. Uh, these are all the things that I just imagined. Imagination. Imagined that it could look like this. Uh, you know, what would it look like? Uh, some masquerades that have never been built before, I designed them in this process of my artworks and created them and that's all. Abstract, totally. Abstract. Wow. wow. So you, by your solution, you mentioned Ipara. We are in Ipara. We are in Ipara, yes. Yeah. This is where Budoasha is. Yes, we are so, in Ipara. Shall we say that you have come back home? Because I wonder if this is where you started. Is this where you were born? Uh, I was born in Lagos. Aha. But most of my holidays were spent here in this town. Each time we had holidays in those days, we would be added into Ipara, um, in Bole Kajas, you know. You know, you don't know what Bole Kajas are. <laughs> Come down and let's fight. Because it's a, it's a wooden uh, frame on a Bedford chassis, you know, built on that chassis. Only one door. Uh, you come through the door and you sit on benches. The people in the middle, they sit back to back. The people on the sides, they now face those people uh, on the middle benches. It's, uh, you might step on each other and fight might begin. And they say, Bole Kaja. <laughs> but the driver stop. Bole, <laughs> come down, let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he got his name from. So, such are the uh, transport modes in which we come to a barabai. And I've loved this since then. So, Buduasha has been on my mind to create something like this in the para For years, maybe 70, 1972 or something, I still have the newspaper clippings that I'm going to do a drama school in the para. See how far this dream has been going on. See what time it has taken for me to just begin it now. So, and I'm very positive about life. And I'm just going to spend another 20 years retiring into this place mm -hmm. and making it Ashe. like Ashe. my dream as Ashe. I wanted it. Ashe. Ashe. So, let's talk about, so you were born in Lagos? I was born in Lagos, Olu Bowo area. Uh, Griffin Street, number seven, in particular. Wow. On July 4th. 4th of July, 1942. Wow. wow. Amazing. And so you grew up in that, this particular area. The, uh, can you describe how it was? That area was... The low area was between uh, Elegbata and uh, Elegbata and uh, other streets. The uh, Griffin Street led straight to to the school and the church. <coughs> you go up you the Barra Street where the Olu the Awe Industrial J A Ajao and Sons, the Barra Street. And then you turn left uh, school to the school uh, to the church. Olobo Methodist School. And when you move beyond Olobo, 
but you can come out on Akogmo Street and that's where you are going to the post office you pass by West, West End Hotel and then right in front of you is Broad Street and the UTC wow. UTC so it was a walking distance between who, who lived there? Was it like a mix of different mix ethnic of groups? different different ethnic groups? You know, even there was a house on Olegbata Street where sailors wow. who ply Liberia, you know, all these West African ships where they live and they will stay in the evening and sing to themselves and play guitar. I used to go and just watch them play as a child. Then on the right, uh, the show showboys, showboys, mm. the Jaji, Jaji, the owner of nearly he owned nearly the area. He bought wow. everything by then. Wow. And then at the back of our house, uh, S L A D U, mm. Baba, the prominent yes. uh, S L A D U, he lived at the back of our house. Wow. And uh, a lot of other people living in the areas. Uh, we were very close to the lagoon because beyond the school, you move into a broad street, you turn right, you turn left, you go, if you turn left, you are going to go through uh, UTC and uh, UAC, you are by the lagoon. If you turn right, you are going down to Niger House and uh, CFAO. You just hit the lagoon again at the marina. So I imagine that all this time, growing up in this kind of <clears throat> cosmopolitan setting, you, of course, I'm sure your parents wanted you to go, go to school, go to school, maybe you know, become, oh, yes. become a doctor or something, whatever. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so how did you kind of put your foot on this path? <clears throat> you see, as a child, they thought I was just doing it for fun. As a child, I was creating a lot of things for my ilk, my mm. age group to, to take for free or to buy for uh, half a penny or quarter of a penny. Cabs, a face mask wow. at uh, Christmas, Garita, yeah, wow. face mask at Christmas, a lantern at uh, the time of Muslim uh, festivals, Sukunobiya and Simiya, and Tori Olong and Simiya. And I, I would build masks mm -hmm. with a, you know, with a colored papers, put a candle in it. I would build plenty so I can sell. Mm -hmm. so, and I used to even uh, create a movie, movie show in my compound. I would cover the table with white cloth, and I would have cut a, a different kinds of uh, effigies. Put them on sticks and be puppetry. Puppetry. Over, 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 The end. <laughs> so, young Jimmy Sholanke's talent was growing in many directions. Songwriting came in, and then at this point, he started sneaking into uh, Abala the nightclub at Olorunshogu, which was close to his father's house, and there he met Roy Chicago, the great band leader. Um, and then he, he collaborated with the band and started writing songs for them. One of the songs that he wrote was called Onili Goguro. It became a big hit for Red Chicago and his band. Mm. I gave them about four or five songs. <clears throat> the next thing I was hearing from school was my songs on radio. Mm. Most especially Onili Goguro. Written by Jimmy Sholanke. And they, used to, and they used to say it was written by you? Yes. Okay, so you got the credit? Yes. Okay. And I was still in school. And then the war started between my daddy, my belatedly uh, caring daddy. He said, uh, no, 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 no. We go to engineering. We go to law. Was he missing? It was near Manguru Gay, the Aroni, near Balabi nightclub. Oh, no, 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 no. 
what can I do now? So when I left secondary school, he thought the best thing to do is package me away from Lagos mm -hmm. and put me uh, with my uncle, M.S. Yowale. His house is the biggest on that road. In the Parahia. In the Parahia, opposite the petrol station. Uh, he was the Western Region Commissioner in London. He was the one bringing all these uh, uh, the factories. He brought Niger Right, brought the uh, Caxon Press in Ibadan. And they said, yeah, it would be good to be a uh, uh, printing press engineer. So he took me and attached me to Caxton Press as a engineer in training. Training, yes. So I was there. Yeah, they bought plenty of uh, clothes for me and everything. <laughs> I was living in Yagonku in Ibadan. A fine place, boys' quarters of one of those big palaces. I was enjoying myself. But then I started studying the area. <laughs> I discovered Independence Hotel was just a four or five minutes walk from Iago. And if you go down the slope, you just come up again into Paradise Hotel. <laughs> this will have taken me from the road. They've mapped me. <laughs> so little by little, I got to know the area. I will be going to hang around in the uh, uh, Independence Hotel at Okebola. Mm. And uh, who was there? My friend who just died. Mm. My friend who just died. Orlando Julius. Orlando Julius. Orlando Julius was performing there. In no time we just clicked. Ah. So the point that Okay, eh, all right. Okay, all right. Eh, I will come tomorrow. I'm coming. I started going to the Independence Hotel, playing with Orlando Julius, until I got used to it. And I stopped going to work eventually. Wow. And that's when they started reporting me to my uncle, Chief M.S. Shuwale, in whose house I was living. And at the point, he would tell me, ah, eh, eh, bale, lost the vision, you must only believe me. That's why they left me on my own to be on my own. I moved out of the palatial uh, quarters <laughs> in Yakoku. I moved into Independence Hotel. Wow. I was staying with uh, one young lady there wow. who kept my box under her bed and I was enjoying my life. At this point, you are still very young, because yes. at that point, OJ was still very young. Oh yes, we are both young. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, around 1920, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. 1920, yes. Yeah. Very early. Very early. And uh, we became bandsmen. Uh, Baba Aikidairo got us instruments, and mm. we became Aikidairo Globetrotters Band. This was supposed to be part of his own ensemble or a separate? A separate. Okay. Separate. But we were earning his name. Okay. Aikidairo Globetrotters Band. At a point where we had a lot of job to do in Elysia, we were staying in Aikirairo's house. Why did he do this for you? Just to help you? He bought instruments for us and we were making money. Help for, no, what was his own gain from it? Was it just to help you? Just to help you. But Aikirairo is the senior brother of Orlando ah, Julius. Ah, okay. So he was just helping. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Senior brother from the same house. Even I saw the 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 family 
invitation to his burial. Mm -hmm. the, the, the same family with Ike Dairo. <coughs> Sunday, the driver had an accident in the Kiwi. Thank God we were at the back. I think he slept off. The driver slept off and skidded off the old Ibado Ipe road and hit a tree. And well, we thank God. You're we coming from a show at night. We're coming from a show. In the in the morning. In the morning, okay. All, after like all night show. Uh, all night show we were uh, going to Elisha. Mm. And he just slept up in the Kiri. And, and, and you were there and OJ was we there. We were all there. Wow. We were all there. Part of the uh, safety that God has been doing for me. Mm. We were all there. Uh, at the end of that we the boss that uh, brother Dairo, Brakendi, we call him Brakendi. <laughs> that brother Kendi bought for us. The boss was messed up and all that and all that. So, so that was the end of the group. So that was and uh, some boys decided uh, to stay away. I think I then joined uh, uh, his other brother. Ajilo. Chris Ajilo okay. at Dogo Night Club. Because by then I have learned so many standard tunes mm. from my popular program, Variety Hello Times, from uh, Akiwa and the the pianist, who is the producer of that program. He taught me, Fly Me to the Moon, he taught me Summertime. Uh, Autumn Leaves, all those great songs, and I was singing them in this program. But having acquired all sorts of experiences and, and interests in standard tunes, by the time I met uh, Chris Ajilo, he too had all those songs in his repertoire, so it just clicked. So I started singing for Ajilo at Gogo Night Club. From there on to so many other uh, bands until I left uh, but I came to Lagos. Meanwhile, my father was, he started liking me because he, <laughs> he well, he's been hearing of me, reading of me, uh, people have been writing. Uh, By this time you are getting right, right things written about you in newspapers. Yes, well, yes. And uh, I met, uh, that was the time I met uh, the Mbari group. Okay. Inka, Emily Jadu, Mike Okigo, Akiyuba, Ralph Okpara, at Mbari. So there I became a bigger boy mm. because I was coming to the place to eat, drink free beer. We has and uh, 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 suddenly they said they started a school of drama. Uh, 1963 school of drama. <laughs> because already we were just doing small, small. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Because at this time, when you met these people, they were into drama. The and drama, and the music. Okay. Yeah. So you were just. Singing, oh, I was just singing. But by the time I met them, they've already been opening the expanse of theater. Okay, uh, Jimmy, you said you stand there. Ah. By the time we say, John Kibuboloa, Jimmy, you just come out and say, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> okay. So, little by little, I became a dramatist. <laughs> and they opened drama school 1966. Yeah, nothing, you know. Like, 1963. Three, okay. 1963. School of Drama. UI. 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 School of Drama, UI. 
and we were all requested to apply. We applied and we went through everything, audition, uh, writing and everything, and we were taken. I was uh, among them, Jamie Obelaya, TJ Lano, Jimmy Johnson, mm -hmm. myself, Iwan De Akibo, Betty Okotie, um, that bunch that we were this, the very first school of drama students in Africa. Wow. And you know, that was a new angle to me. Mm -hmm. I had the talent to music and all that. I've been doing that. This is an open. <laughs> That's why nobody uh, can know exactly who I am. Yes, because you see, because this is the thing that many people want to always ask. Many people think that you just stumbled on music later in your career. No. Because many people will say, but my father says it's TV storyteller. He said TV. I said, no, but he was a musician before yes. he became that. Yes. But they don't. Uh, so music was the first thing. It was Song the very first thing. Like, songwriting. Songwriter, singer. Singer. And then before I even joined into drama, into drama. Mm. yes, I was already doing all that. I was already being known as a musician and all that before I got into drama. So who are the teachers at this school of drama? Because uh, if it was the first Peggy school Apa, of drama, uh -huh. Peggy Apa taught a, a dance. Uh, uh, the director was Jeffrey Axworthy. Uh, Martin Barnum taught uh, acting. Uh, Auntie, Auntie taught speech. Auntie Shomi taught speech with uh, Professor Adedeji, speech too. Uh, and that's where I was able to speak better in English than I used to. No, don't say that. Say this. this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Baba, Baba, the art, the artist, the artist was teaching us uh, set building, set building. Uh, his name is here right now. Yeah. Hmm. He builds great houses these days. Uh, I remember his name, but he taught us set building and uh, stage presence and con con. Kubayo uh, Dele was there. Uh, Professor Shoinka was uh, part of our. Uh, Actors' uh, experience, and that's how we just started. Bam. And I was there until the that set graduated, and I remained. I didn't want to go anywhere again. Oh. I stayed until the school of drama became metamorphosed into a department of theater arts. Um, by then, I was already a potent professional. And the whole team that created the School of Drama moved from Ibadan to set up the Institute of Cultural Studies in Ileife. Because I was already used to them. Pegiapa, uh, really, all of them, the photographer, everybody, they just move en masse to Ife to set up the Institute of Cultural Studies. And they were doing very well. They set up the Oriolokun situation in Arubidi. And they were always having festivals. Every year, if a festival of arts, if a festival, and I was reading about them, and I decided I want to go to Ife because uh, the school of drama has become has become a theorized uh, school uh, a department of uh, theater arts, and I was having less to do. Maybe we were just being uh, the 
Okay, go and show them now. Okay. You should show them now. So you're uh, like teaching assistants? Yes. Show them. Uh, so you're like kind of basically running the practicals? Uh, yes, so practicals. Yes, practicals. Uh -huh. So I started hearing messages, getting messages from uh, Ife. Then one weekend, uh, late brother Bwe Gajai brought a message to me from uh, La Rotini. Uh, Mr. Jimmy, we need you in Ife. Wow. That's how I just gave up. I just sneaked out from uh, Ibado. Just straight to Ife. When I got there, I was very happy. Why? They took me to Rio Loco and they introduced the three people I would be assisting. Peggy Harper, my dance teacher at Ibado. I will be assisting her dance. Aki Yuba, my boy that we like each other a lot. I will be assisting in music. Ola Rutimi, who personally wanted me because he had seen me in performances at the UI, who wanted me to join him in a fair drama. So you can imagine, that's where I got all my experiences from. I was endowed with all these great people, assisting them. At the same time, in the afternoon, uh, we do music, I can use Mujawi Bibi Kiwoma Bagbimi Mujawi Udi Tete Kiwoma Temimo That's where I started consuming, consuming more, a lot more than even Nagu Andu then. The dance star. Because in the school, Peggy told me that, oh, Oh, Jimmy, oh, very good. That's the way you move it. Yes, move it. I could dance. And now she is my director. And hmm, for an actor, uh, 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 a director like Ola Rotimi will want 10 of Jimmy Cholanke. So I enjoyed every day at Oreo Loco. So that's how I got to Ife. And in Ife was where I was able to expand, expand and express myself fully, fully. Maybe that's the reason why I, I still stay in Ife till now. Mm. Because my house is still in Ife. Wow. <laughs> if I been that good, would you believe it? I played a role for Ola Rutimi in Ovora when Ogbaisi, the king, the, the king, the, the lame king that was banished by the British. I played that role uh, starting from Ife, they brought Benin people to come and teach us the attitude, the character of an Ovano. And then we took the play to the governor who requested for it, Ogbemudia. Uh, in the stadium, I played that character without microphone, without anything, wow. the whole stadium. They were hearing me loud and clear. And all the, all the chiefs, everybody, they were just like that. Hmm. And when they got home and reported to the KBAC, mm -hmm. how can they, that man, is he still in this town? How has he left? They said, no. There's a meeting the, uh, the, the governor, there's a meeting the governor on Monday. Ah. Eh, I will tell the governor he should not go. If you are all talking about him like this, you stay. <laughs> stay <in the>, wow. <laughs> would you believe it on, on Monday when we met the governor who praised us and thanked us and gave us gifts and presents? At the end of the day, he just said, Excuse me, prof. Uh, I, I believe that all of you can go, but uh, you must leave our Oba behind. <laughs> you cannot take our Oba with you. Uh, 
the professor said, what did you say, <laughs> Your Excellency? I'm saying you cannot live uh, with our oba. Uh, what do you mean, sir? Our oba is staying with us here. <laughs> uh, prof, this one, this, uh, this our oba is not going anywhere. <laughs> That's how I stayed in Benin for five years. I've never had that. Uh -uh. Senior Cultural Officer, Midwest Arts Council. Wow. Wow. Five years. From which, from time, what time? That was uh, about 1970, the, the production was around 1972. At the Ogwe Stadium, and they kept me at that night from that 1972. <laughs> they, I, I was only released when I when people were saying, uh, uh, "We are planning for a uh, first act, and we need him to be here." Blah blah blah. Uh, I took them to the first uh, preparatory aspect of uh, first act, 1974. Every aspect of the performance we took, I see you have the papers, I see you have the reports, the newspaper report, and every aspect of crazy performance we took to Lagos won hmm. gold. Wow. Home to the River was the play we took to Lagos, and I played the lead role. We won, for, we won first, we won the gold. Wow. Written by Neville Ukoli. Neville Ukoli. He was uh, an editor of uh, uh, the newspaper in Benin those days. He wrote the play. We won first. The dance, we won first. Uh, 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 I took solo solo voice, singing some Benin songs. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the stadium in Lagos, National Stadium was where the event took place. The ovation, pa, 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 this man don't become a no. Wow. <laughs> so, 74, that was where Dexter Linderson, who was then the head of uh, the theater department in UI, came and said, Jimmy, come, 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 come. Uh, you're back in the battle. We want you back in the battle. Yeah. You know me, we are friends. I'll take good care of you. <laughs> I take good care of you. We need you back in Ibadan. Within one month, you will have your car. You have, uh, we give you a house. We will anything you need. We are back in it. So, I will finish. And in Benin, then, uh, people were thinking uh, he's a Yoruba man. Yeah, why is he going to be taking all the accolade? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, Ebonhan is there, he can do it too. Ebonhan uh, 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 is there. Uh, and I knew it and I felt it. So little by little by little, I just started dodging work. And <laughs> I just crossed over back to Ibadan. Uh, and then I just, uh, the year after, that's 74, 75. 76, I was already close to the National Theater. I was there at the opening of the National Theater, a uh, voice solo. Ipitombi, Kuroso, Kuroso Dance Group, myself and one Eastern, uh, 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 no, uh, this tumbling Atilogu, Atilogu. Yes. So that's how they opened uh, 29th or so. So you played at the opening of the National, National Theater. National Theater, yes. Wow. The program is in this house, wow. I can show you. Wow. wow. <laughs> With uh, Ipitombi. Ipitombi, yes. Ipitombi wow. was very nice. That was very nice. That was very nice. Yeah. I the music. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Aya, ipi tobi, ya, ipi tobi. In their skimpy, mini Wow, that's lovely.
So that's how in '76, that's how we started uh, rehearsals for for Pestak. Uncle Dakwa was given the directorial position of uh, Wale Oguyemi's Langbodo. So, this first act, you, your I mean, when you started this result, was it under whose auspices? For Nigeria? For, for Nigeria. For, for the first organization itself? For oh, first act itself. Okay. Okay. For first act. I was in music. I was in music because I can Yuba and all of them were there and I was a voice, solo voice for Nigeria. I was uh, in dance because, uh, you know, even I'm dancing now, it's only <laughs> age that is uh, <laughs> that is engaging mm. all those. Uh, <laughs> I, I was in dance, assistant director. I was in drama, actor, actor, the uh, uh, younger Karaogu, and the assistant to the director, costume and stage design, which we were already building from Ibadan, in the premises of uh, the Institute of uh, African Studies. That's where we were quartered. So, first I came and it was good. It was after first act that I decided, what are you doing in Nigeria? Mm. All through 77, I was still going back and forth to the National Theatre because it was opened. Around that time, we were bringing plays from Ibadan, uh, different groups creating performances for the theatre. And so, 78, I just decided to go and take a rest. I traveled out. First to England and then crossed over to America. So this is where the, the, the popular album, the America has got magic. This is where the album came from. <laughs> In 77, towards the end of 77, when I decided, <laughs> What am I doing in Nigeria? I had lots of money being mm. carried around, <laughs> different kinds of uh, currency denominations. I just decided to travel. So I got to London, did one or two things, even performed, uh, rehearsed and performed a drama play by Paul Mesgebe. Mes Mes yes. After that, Somebody saw me in the performance and said he would need me in his play in New York. So immediately I got to New York, I called him, he started calling me. And one other American pianist, Randy Weston. Yes, I know Randy Weston. Yes. Randy Weston. He was here at, uh, at first time. So when I got to uh, New York, I called him. And he said, hey, Jimmy, I talked to you about, uh, I talked to uh, Hugh. I talked to Hugh about you. Uh, he's working on a thing. He will need your voice for this uh, Yoruba voiceover. Um, I'll be glad if you can do it for him. I've told him that he'll call you later in the day, now that you are here. So, later in the evening, I just said, hello. Uncle Jimmy, they say Uncle Jimmy is in town. I said, yeah, who is this? I'm who, Mr. Kera. I'm, I'm, I'm Ralph, I'm Ralph uh, McDonald. Okay. Ralph McDonald, oh yeah. Randy said you'll be calling me. Yes, I would like you come to the studio tomorrow. I will give you a piece of paper. I want to see what you can do about it. Blah, 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 the 24th Kinecon Street, Kinecon. So I went there. He gave me the piece of paper and I said, okay, that's fine. Spoken. It was written in English. Uh, it, was, it, it was in English. So then I translated it. Anola, Ujagbaragada, Ayelujara, 
ono ti la ri odo re koja eru obodo odo ti san 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 ekun omi san titi o ja si a ri ona ah look at the kind of people i met in the studio the next day ah groove by washington i say him me and groove and again wow miriam mokeba you must say kela in the hospitality room me that's why i keep quiet all the time <laughs> <laughs> so what is there for the same project or for a different project you are there for the same, same project uh, wow. the path wow. by ralph mcdonald wow wow wow, wow. you are all there you must say fella uh, checking each other joking with each wow. other playing wow. with each other no once you have gone through that kind of experience you don't you don't even <laughs> <laughs> you don't even you don't even talk to anybody about it. You save all it for yourself forever and never. And you that one will continue to build so much confidence and life and everything from within you. You don't have to you don't have to show up with it. You don't have except when you need to to prove some some people that except when you need to. So we were there and it became a hit. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, no, la. Your voice will start that, you know, music that had all those people ensembled. Uh. That, that, that was huge. That was yes. Huge. Yeah. And it was the same song in 1978 that was used to reopen uh, the Apollo Theater on our 125th wow. Street. Wow. All of them with you live. <laughs> what else do you need? Wow. Also, all those great people with you live. So you you were in New York? Well, it's and that's where you were throughout? No. Okay. So there's a picture after the recording, mm -hmm. after the recording of this uh, uh, track for The Path for Ralph McDonald, I was feeling very uncomfortable with the, with the weather in New York that year. <laughs> 77 snow. Hmm. In New York was too much. Cars outside, you couldn't even see the car. Yeah, Everything is you know, covered with snow. Ah. And I was talking to some of my friends on the West Coast. Hello, Jimmy, we have sun right now. <laughs> I felt you have sun. <laughs> yeah, and is it, it, you mean it's in always, LA? It's always sunny here. <laughs> it's always sunny here. We only had a drizzle in the evening. I said, that's like Africa. <laughs> okay. As I did asking people, how do you get to a West Coast? <laughs> they said, uh, okay, amount, this amount will get you there by air. That's all. I had it in my pocket. Okay, I book now. That's how I went and booked. I booked. A flight for LA. Wow. I left uh, New York, you know, smuggled in a uh, in, uh, jacket. Oh, jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walked into the plane. Uh, in the plane, it started getting warmer. Oh, wow. So I took off the jacket. <laughs> uh, then took off the mufflers and yeah. then. And as we were landing, I saw. Sun shining <laughs> in, in the same country. Same country. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I I landed in a in a sun filled uh, California. Mm -hmm. ah, that's where I stayed. Oh, so you so for the rest of your stay in the US, you were there. Yeah, I was there. So, so what were your activities like in that time? You were there for another two years? Uh, no, not two years ago. Uh, in California? 78, 79, 80, 81, oh. 82. 82. That's when I got tired of the place. <laughs> so, you know, like almost five years? Yes. Oh. That's where I set up uh, the African Review. Oh. The minute I got there that Thursday, my friends who came from Pasadena to pick me from the airport, uh, they, they had a, an African program by Saturday, and they said, ah, 
Baba, you are working on Saturday. The director has said that we must bring you. It was uh, they will pay you. Uh, come and do some African story, African this, African wow. that for us. So I started working on Saturday. Wow. I landed Thursday, wow. Friday, Saturday. The crowd. <coughs> I rolled them over. Wow. So from there, I started getting jobs like that. Wow. Outside of LA, uh, uh, to Houston, where my son is now, mm -hmm. to Houston, to uh, Dallas, wow. that, to, to uh, Bay Area, mm. San Francisco, San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, even uh, that uh, uh, gambling town. Oh, um, is it Vegas? Yes, Las Nevada, Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. So I got there, and somehow the young lady I met at the at the program, and because I mentioned something that was close to the culture that the woman like like Osun Tawani Oba Wache Tawani Oba just say Tawani Oba Wache. Tawani Oba, and that woman too fell for me, uh, sent a car to me. But meanwhile, the younger lady took me to Los Angeles to go and know the town, took me to this place, Rodeo Avenue, and uh, we just enjoyed. For about two days, because she told Ryu that I want to show him everywhere. Mm. Uh, is he not safe with me? And he said, oh yes, oh yes. That's how I got involved with that girl and we even married each other. I had wow. one baby for each other. Wow, in the US? In the US. So that would have been your first child? No? No. Oh, okay. you already had children in Nigeria? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm a giant. Okay, no I'm like, a what, 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 what? I'm a giant. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but all this time in the U.S., you, you always knew you were going to come back. I knew. Okay. I knew. I never went there with the attitude of, I would uh, stay here. Hmm. You know, I'm a bushman. I'm a very <laughs> culturally oriented person. There were a lot of things that I was noticing that hmm. I, yes, I, well. yes, hmm. I, that I couldn't. Uh, because, uh, no, because those years, this was the height of hedonism and uh, whatever in the US, like with the arts community and the music community, uh, the, the drugs and. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, so, yeah. I mean, how did you navigate all this? Because there's no way that you wouldn't have seen it. You see, I saw it. Uh, like I mentioned that I was in a hospitality room, in a hospitality room in America, <laughs> there's a big table there. Uh, cocaine, uh, marijuana, crack, everything, uh, brandy, whiskey, everything, beer, Budweiser. Serve yourself. Serve yourself. <laughs> 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 but me, in fact, that's the reason why the young lady who I said I married, we couldn't cook. She was a very good lover of uh, cocaine. Mm. <clears throat> And I didn't know anything. I would come home from uh, shows. I would meet a crisp hundred dollar bill that has been rolled Road, yeah. into. Uh, where is this hundred dollar bill from? I will unfold, unroll it. Towards the end, I will. It will be boundary. Yes. <laughs> but much, much later. <laughs> People were telling me, ah, look at you. They've used it to do and do yes. and do and do. I say, ah. So I just told the lie I was going to work one day. And then I came back. I couldn't, I couldn't sound up. Seeing what was going on, ah. I just tiptoed back out. That's when I knew that that's what they were doing. 
and one young man, a Nigerian who I met, who came to visit me before I knew that he was in that, and that's the end of the boy Papa in America. Wow. Wow. He was into it, he was dealing. Mm. So he was the one who would bring it there, and uh, Elizabeth's friend would just surround, and then and uh, they would be together, and, uh, and me, I not see you. I not see you. So you came back to Nigeria in 1982 or 81? 82. 82. 82. Was there a job waiting? I mean, uh -uh. to leave America just I'm coming. There must have been some. I even told uh, my secretary that I was coming. But by the time uh, I stayed here, a letter from Sheriff came that uh, I'm not taking care of my children mm. because we had a uh, problem before I left for Nigeria. Sheriff was saying that uh, the letter is in my, is in my file here. <laughs> uh, I said, I will look on the well, Sheriff. Sheriff ni mum on Nigeria. I will not be able to Sheriff. Sheriff, look on me. On the... You did not pay, them. you must be paid some so money. So you, you owe child, child support. Child and support. And <laughs> <that's> <laughs> I, 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 I said, if that is the situation, me, I don't day here again now. <laughs> me, I don't day my hometown. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> me, I don't day my hometown. So, and then immediately after, my secretary sent me a letter that my house has been you know, broken into. Wow. Uh, they were looking for something in particular. They looked on there everywhere. They put everything on top. Of that. So my fear about going back, you know, increased. This was the police that broke into the place? Or? No, police couldn't have broken into your house. So turning everything into, there must be some people. Hmm. So whoever they were, I said, mm. My life is at risk now. That's where my mind started telling me, what do you have there? All the panty clothes, panty to go just in the lake. What? Stay. I didn't enjoy myself. So the first time I went to Ifi, they just say, hey, I'm back, man, America, calm, <laughs> everything. <laughs> the first time I went to Ifi, I was just chatting with people. Hey, Uncle Jimmy, ah, ah, baby. And then, Oga, Ungi, who walked past, he just looked at me and said, Send me my outfit. Went there, chop, chop, chop. I walked into Oga's office. <clears throat> he said, Look. If there is a space in front of my door, that cap, that American bag, <laughs> go and put it down there and I'll come back. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> then I came back and hey, now we can talk. What's all this uh, American uh, rubbish uh, doing all over the place? Look, 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 look. We have a job on ground. People like you, what are you doing? Secretary! Temp uh, temporary appointment. And that's how I was appointed back till I left. Wow. That's how I was. But, but US wasn't a waste of time. No, no. For example, no. you had that great experience with all these great musicians. Yeah. Which is the kind of thing you can't buy with money. At all. Yeah. Then, you did come back with one album or two. Am I wrong? Two. Two albums. Yeah. In fact, uh, this year, one of the albums, uh, only Orisha. Mm -hmm. A music company in London, <coughs> Sound, Soundway or mm -hmm. Soundway, signed a contract with me, gave me some money, and added it to a 
a collection of African songs that they have just released. So you made these two albums, Ori, Ori Orisha. Ori Orisha. And America, America has got, has got magic. magic. That one I know very well. America has got magic. Mm. And did they, I mean, they were released while you were there? Yes. And did, did they sell a bit or? Oh, they sell. They, they, I mean, uh, because then I was just showing off. I was making money through the African Review. Okay. The Los Angeles School District. They were always giving me schools to go. You know, all the files are here. So the money was just coming in. So yes. This was just like uh, I could bomb. Uh, wow. And you set up this African Review. Yes. Business. It's mine. Yes. Wow. I even incorporated it. Oh wow. Had a lawyer and all that. Oh wow! Oh, well, let's go to TV now. How did you get into this? Because TV is a lot of people who are in their forties now, thirties now. You can't convince them that ah, Uncle Jimmy is a you know what? I don't know about you, Lanke. He is a TV just to tell it like the Baba Wani woman comes to the farm and he said, no, but it's more than that. People don't know Jack. You don't know anything. So how did this TV thing come up? How did we get into? You see, when I came back, when I came back. I called uh, B.D. Wright. I said, B.D. Wright, you know, uh, this thing I'm doing for children, I want to start doing it here. So let's... Mm, what you are doing, the African Review, mm, okay. In fact, one young lady followed me from America. And I thought uh, we could do something and then, you know, she would be our... our American uh, influence mm -hmm. and all that. So we decided to do a children's program at the Unilag. Okay. The staff club Unilag, the forecourt. They, we, had, we advertised it, called Be The Right, We Rehearsed. And oh, the children of the members we were filled to the brim. And we were able to do that show and you know, that energy American, uh, <laughs> American approach of doing it. And LTV8 just started then. They came and recorded every bit of what we did. So when they took it back, they took it back and edited it. They had two 30, 30 minutes in what they recorded. My storytelling and by uh, folk singing and all that. <clears throat> then they called us and said, ah, hey, what about uh, director of programs, Soro? We discussed with the director of programs and he said, these two episodes are ready. We will uh, want you to come back so we can tell the DG. Uh, we can start. So in our discussions, we agreed that we are going to do the, we call it, Family scene. They use the two episodes as pilots. They started recording. Bidi and I started recording for them. We did it for years. That's where we started the television at LTV. At LTV eight with the program Family Scene, children's uh, program. So uh, it was from there that uh, uh, NTA invited me to a children programs workshop in Jos at the NTA uh, college in Jos. So that's how it started. And when I got tired of uh, a ga Galaxy, a friend of mine, we took the same program to Galaxy Television. So this was called Story Storyland Story Land. on NTA. NTA. This is a very very, That's a very, very, very popular. One. Very, yes. very popular. That's right. We I did think. I did that for years. So when the the center couldn't hold, <laughs> we, we fell apart. <laughs> and so what happened after that? Uh, Steve Ojo. Uh, the owner of Galaxy, my friend, we did some series 
somehow it broke again. That was when Dokwesi sent somebody to me. African stories on AIT. Uh, and since we stopped that, I just knocked all of them off. <laughs> Leave me alone. By the time I'm ready, you know, we can record the series yes. and sell it yes. anywhere in the world. Yes, yes. And that is the way forward now. Uh, that's the way The market is global now. I'm still alive. Then. And I'm still ready. I'm still ready. And you're even more qualified now to be that uh, Baba father Baba. who's there telling these stories. Yes. 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 You don't have uh, to act it now. No. <laughs> you are the Baba. You are the Baba now. <laughs> truly and truly, you are the Baba now. <laughs> uh, so, of, of all this, of all the things you've done, I mean, I, I don't like to ask artists this, but I, but I think almost every artist will say there's something. Of all of them, we know you You are a visual artist, we know you are a dancer, you are a singer, you are a songwriter, you are a dramatist, you are a storyteller, you are a folklorist, you've done research, you, you are a writer, you've published books. So, for, for all these things, this whole gamut of artistic expression, so is your, if you were to say pick one, this is the one that's your favorite. I hope you said music. Yeah? <laughs> I just love to sing. The singing. Singing. Just love to sing. Let what me is have... it about? What is it about when you are in front of an audience and you are singing? Uh, when you are singing, and when you are singing in front of an audience, you have your lyrics. You have a good band behind you. Your dancing experience comes to be of good use. Your acting experience comes into good use. Look, uh, you're a messenger. You're a messenger. And as you are passing the message, you are inspirited. Inspirited. When I am singing in front of a crowd <coughs> and I have a good, you know, accompanying band and the crowd is there in front of me, maybe that's what I want to do and die there. Hmm. Because it's a different uh, uh, kettle of uh, water, you know, when that is happening to you and is something you know how to do it. Uh, they're very spiritual. And you're one with the audience and everything yes, else needs to be... Yes, very spiritual. <laughs> very spiritual. And nothing is uh, more than it. I love doing it. And that's the only way that uh, a performing artist can... You know, because you are lifted. Especially when you are mm, delivering something that the whole audience, you know, that, that uh, union is all incorporated into you and I, we and you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, very, it's, it's, it's very fascinating, you know, mm -hmm. when you know the truism of it and you are doing the actual thing and you can ah, and the audience is there, and yeah. it's, it's almost like okay, you like the conductor, but yeah. they're, but they also your own conductor, but they also yes. conducting you. Yes, so it's like uh, it's it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's powerful. powerful, very very powerful. Mm. And in that moment, the artist probably starts to feels a sense of completeness. Total, mm. total, total. So when you come at the very or in power. That uh, <clears throat> sometimes people, uh, I mean, my for for your songs, I know a lot of your songs. In fact, uh, well, I have some songs. Uh, to me. <laughs> Most people go, I have a lot of them. There's uh, this one. Uh, Barani Jhoje. That's from this town. That's a folk song from here. That's from this town. 
because the man who gave me this land, my father, <coughs> he just took his walking stick and tapped it on this ground, do something here. Hmm. So Baba that gave you, gave you this land, how is that song related to him? It was about him. But it was about his father. Okay. When I was a little boy like this, I started hearing that song. He, they, they would have the land in mass like they are having because they are, his own father was a Lisa. Mm. That was when I was born at Deboye. That was since I've been hearing the song. So the Lisa in 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 the bar, what is that? Is it like the body or what? Is it? The next to the upper. Okay. 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 My grandfather was a Lisa. Somehow, my father too became a Lisa, and so that song kept, you know, you know, uh, being hummed or sung around me. Is that a shawl they throw? And if a chief has got plenty of shakis, some will be condemned. And so a grandchild could be tied with shaki to prove that our father has plenty at home. Uh -huh. That's it. That's the story about that song. That our father has plenty at home. So we can use it to tie our babies. Kalomushaki. Kavuma Chota. Kavuma Boja. Kavu Boja. Bareni Joye. Kalomushaki. Kavuma Goja. Bareni Joye. Yes. It, it's kind of song that, because I mean, f folk songs have that kind of thing where, where you, if you are imaginative, you can imagine so much, so much going on. And then the way, the way, because I want to talk about your voice too, sir. It's like it calls you to your roots. And, but does, is the singer aware of that? Is, is this something that you trained at, or is this just your voice assistant has, has evolved? Okay, at a conference uh, this year, CBAC. Had a conference, and they were talking about uh, tradition, etc., etc., etc. And I just asked them to give me a uh, time to just talk about my eternal tools, hmm. folk tales, and folk songs. I think it's on uh, YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay, uh, as I was uh, delivering the paper, I was going to Yaniwura Yebiye. Each time I sing any of those songs, because they are my folk songs, they are my traditional songs, I put so much pathos, so much passion, so much uh, definitiveness of this is my song I will sing it so your, this is your old soul is in it <laughs> that is me and folk songs when I sing standards I'll just sing it like I've had it being <laughs> sung go to the moon and let me play among the stars just like I've had you sang it but when it is a song a folk song you know that is part of my beginning, is part mm -hmm. of my existence. You have to sing it so that even when children hear it, they will want to copy you singing mm -hmm. it. Because that's the only way you can get them to, you know, to imbibe it and get used to it. You, you cannot sing it just as if you are singing any... Uh, the, each of the words must sink. You want a man calling bed, you want a man you buy a bed, you want a man better. 
So what? That's another one. Which in actual fact me might and I'm me me might motive for or judge. That is another uh, one where when you sing it, uh, yeah, let me use this word. You kill it when you sing it. Mm. It's just like. Can anybody do this song better than this? It's just perfect. There's something about, and I know that you know, we are a man with that and by. I don't know where did you come up with. Come up with. It's an Ife song. Yeah. It's an authentic Ife song. A dirge talking about uh, sharing, you know. Uh, somebody, if you don't like to share, if you don't like to share, like to share these are the songs they sing for you. That, eh, 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 even when we are eating bitter leaf, when we are eating, it does not even taste uh, bitter that, that now. Because when we are when we are sharing it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> any, any anybody who refuses to share, maru bi will see what the good Lord will do for the person. You see the repercussions by God. So, when you sing it, you know, songs with such a heavy, heavy, with just heavy content, you don't sing it, <laughs> you sing it, you sing it heavily, that the person listening to it will move from his reclining position on his chair and sit straight. Hmm. Hmm. So, so that's beautiful, it. Beautiful songs. Yes. Beautiful songs.